production. We're spawning up in the top left hand position, representing Infused. It is the orange Zerg player, James Eakins. And to the top right, his opponent, the blue Protoss, 1 0 up. It's Randy, who's putting a pylon on okay, the low ground. Okay, okay, okay. I would like to predict that there's going to be either a Nexus or a Forge. Okay, you're gonna say Nexus or a Forge? <laughs> Are you sure? No, I wanna I bet a drink I, I wanna bet a drink with you. Where like, like I'm, I'm gonna bet it's, it's gonna be a gateway. I don't reckon it would do it twice in a row. I really don't. I really Okay, don't. you want me a drink if it's a gateway. Oh my god. You want me a drink? Yeah! <laughs> How did that why would this even happen? Randy! <laughs> okay, it worked game one. To so. be fair, it's Habitation Station, which is a very, very close rush distance map in comparison. So this could actually work pretty well. Once again, James Jenkins is going to 13 pool. He expects this 100%. 100%. Well, he expects something weird. It is Randy. I would expect something weird. If you don't, it, things are going to go badly. It's like playing against Goody and not expecting Mech. He bios sometimes, man. What? It Never. blows my mind. Like, he does it, and just, why? It just It's so weird. So Randy currently doing things exactly the same. About to chuck down that pylon block. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There we go. Boom. All right. I want to see James Kins make four or six more lings early on. And then I think he holds easily. He did that last game. No, no, no. Oh, no like four or six more. More. Than okay. more than last game. So you mean like 12 or 14? Yes. Okay. I think if he cuts off reinforcements and just controls his units better, he can do well. Six lings on the way. Exact same thing out of James Jenkins as well. Double extract trick. We'll get an Overlord next. Queen Sixlings on the way out. Drone. I kind of like to see Randy just like double gas steal just to <laughs> completely screw with him. All right, the lanes are coming on in here. Zealot is moving across the map here. And uh, we will see this pylon focused on down. First, Zealot going to try to make a little bit of an impact here. Second one's already out. Chrono Boost is pretty good. He's got to get the. He's got to keep the zealot count low, though. The problem is that there were five or six zealots just all together, yeah. and that was very difficult to deal with. Even adding in the second probe again, this is definitely well rehearsed here from Randy. But a surround of the zealot here. If he picks off that zealot, that is worth the links, I would think. But he's actually going for the probes instead. Gets the two probes. Good damage on the zealot, but losing three links and taking a lot of damage on two more. This could still be a little rough. He's bringing the queen down. I like this. He needs to focus on that one low health zealot. Good. The shields will not regenerate now. Not as quickly, anyway. The probes don't matter, though. They're there to keep the zealot alive. Yes. That's their purpose. So that prioritization was an interesting choice. Morling's now out, and it has been about... It has actually been about six more than last game. But I still don't know if it's enough here. Ah, losing some for free is not good here. He needs to get some damage on that zealot before its shields regenerate. But it is looking like that zealot will have no problem regenerating its shields. I'd like to see the queen from the main come down to the natural as well, because he knows Randy's going to push into this. There's already four zealots here. Bring your main queen, Jamesy. What are you doing? Come on, man. He looks like he wants to go for a counterattack again. I, uh, he's juking and jiving and buying some time, but he's not making any lings. Does the, he have any larva? He does. The problem is, and it's something we briefly touched on, you need ideally six lings to kill a zealot. But that doesn't scale. As the number of zealots increases, you need exponentially more lings yeah. to deal with them. So with good micro, like, as you said, with good micro, four to six is enough. But... You can't get good surface area when there's five zealots hugging. And that's the thing. As they as their numbers increase, you need more and more and more zerglings to be able to engage them. And basically, that's what Randy's doing. He's got five now. The lings are a long way back. Going to be trying to actually trap these uh, zealots bring in. The queen. Bring the queen, James. That's unfortunate. The second queen's not coming on down. The first queen taking a lot of damage here. He needs to buffer with the lings. He needs to buffer with the links. The queen goes down. That is absolutely huge here. There's nowhere near enough links to actually fight this. Two roaches on the way. Is Randy going to go straight for the hatchery again? He may well. The queen is going to come on down from the main here. This is a good decision here from James E. Randy spending too much time chasing the links around. James Kins needs to deny the, the the kill on that hatchery. A kill on that hatchery is going to be too much. The, the queen, even if it dies, is buying time for the roaches. The roaches are out, and it looks like James Kins will hold. Getting those roaches out do buy him, or they don't even buy him time. They shut down this push. Even a handful of roaches can deal with a huge number of zealots, especially when there's queen support there. This is a completely different ball game to map one. The hatchery is still alive. This means that James Higgins isn't stumped in production or income in the same way that he was last game. And also, he's level in the work account. 
Also, a big difference to what we saw in game number one, where Randy took the massive lead. I think he's going to take the gold again. I like this decision. I was ab I was about to suggest it, but uh, James Keen's reading my mind. We see three cannons once again from Randy, so investing a lot in that defense because he's going to go straight for the Sky Toss here. Void Ray starting on up. No second Stargate just yet, but once again, foregoing the Warp Gate completely. So, lacking the Warp Gate isn't a huge problem if you're just only going to produce Void Rays, but we've also got another variation here. Only the one Stargate as opposed to two. That means there's going to be a lot lower number of Void Rays early game, and that means they're a lot less scary. Especially yeah. if a hank full of Hydras come out. A low number of Hydras can actually be really effective. So, I'm going to be excited to see precisely how James Jamesykins goes about this. Alright, we see continued Void Ray production coming out, as to be expected. But as you said, that's not as scary. If James Jamesykins just gets out the number of Queens he had last time, or even just a couple less, he should be in an okay spot. The gold base thus far not spotted here. And uh, Randy is going to veer over towards the gold base now with this Void Ray. He may be able to force a cancel with the Prismatic Alignment. But I think James Jamesykins could save that by bringing the Queens over. Still waiting, patiently, to see exactly what these Void Rays are going to do. Going to try and deny the gold base. The Queen's going to take quite a while to get there. The Hatchery is going to take a decent amount of damage, but because there was only the single Void Ray production at a time, there isn't very many. Engaging directly up against the Queen, but two more coming over as well. Good time warp. And one Queen will fall, which helps negate oh, some of the anti-air. Surviving with just 10 hit points here. We need more... The Void Rays need to take out this hatch. That hatch has to fall, basically. Yeah, James Higgins is going to be in a great economic spot if this finishes on, if this is able to get saturated and stay alive, and the saturation part's already done. All he needs to do is keep it alive at this point. A couple of queens. Another spore is moving on into the main there as well, or into the gold base there as well, and I think that's going to be enough to hold this. There's a third base coming down for Randy now, but honestly, with only one Stargate, I don't know if that's... Did I say one Stargate? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant three Stargates. But they're not built yet, they're Penguin. They're not, but still, this is funny. Three potential Stargates. They might get cancelled. Oh, he didn't scout it, the Overlord. I thought it saw it, but no. He should assume, though. I mean, he knows Randy's playstyle pretty well. And this is the trouble. Doing an unorthodox build, like Randy did in game number one, is cool because it catches your opponent off guard and they're sat there scratching their head in a stressful situation. The problem is, if you do that exact same build game two, your opponent, as long as they're of a decent caliber, such as James Jamesykins, they're going to sit there between the games and go, okay, he just did what to me? Realistically, how could I have stopped that? And he'll work it out. And he has worked it out. He's gone, okay, if I get my faster Roach Warren down, get a few more lings earlier, I won't, as long as I don't lose that natural hatchery, I should be okay into the mid game. So now it's up to Randy. Can this late game composition actually shut him out? Well, the Queens are taking a while to react here. Coming on over to the gold base once again. One of the spores will go down. The Queen's coming on in. There are Hydras in this composition as well. The Mothership Core picked off. The hide, uh, the Void Rays have been forced back once again. Jamesikins not yet opting for the for the uh, Infestation Pit, but we have a Fleet Beacon on the way, Battles. That's expected, I think. And getting that Fleet... Did you ever, did you ever think that you would say the words, Yeah, I expected him to go carry <laughs> No, is the honest answer to that. But James Ekin's putting on a lot of pressure himself. And bringing the Queens over as well. I like this. This is a good call. Look at how many cannons are having to get made in order to defend this. But this leaves the natural a bit more vulnerable. Well, James Ekin's trying to find what he can do, but he doesn't want to engage without the transfusing power of the Queens. So, on the other hand, you don't want to wait till those cannons are done. So it's becoming a little bit of an awkward situation here where the Queens just aren't going to get there quite in time. He may go for the natural, though. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. He is going to be able to hit just before the cannons are done. Is he going to be able to focus them down? It's a big question here. One of the cannons will fall pretty, pretty quickly. In come the Void Rays. One of them going to be going down. We already have a Pro Pole here out from Randy as well. The Transfuse is coming on down really well on the Hydra so far. A lot of these Hydras are, be able, are able to survive a long more uh, a lot longer than they should. All of the probes that have been pulled are dead. The Meat Shield is gone. The Void Rays are losing a lot of hit points, Maddles. They will survive with very, very low hit points, but the Hydra is trying to close the distance. One of those Void Rays will be focused on down. Another one getting incredibly low here. The cannons are gone. James Ekins looks like he may break Randy. And it's because he knew what Randy was going to do, or had a good guess at it. 
If you do the same weird build twice, your opponent will adjust, and Jamie can basically exclusively build after the initial roaches to stop the zealots, queens, and hydras. The nexus falls. The army here is a lot lower. Sure, there's some carriers on the way, but they're not done for a long time. They take two, two minutes. minutes. It's so rare we see carriers. I actually had to double check. Though. Yeah. All right. So Jamesikins has gotten rid of the third. Carriers on two base isn't really that scary, to be honest. No, they are expensive. They're exceptionally expensive. They take forever to make, and they cost eternally. They eternally cost minerals. Yep. Interceptors cost 25 minerals to build. I don't actually think that you can produce three carriers at a time off of two bases of economy. I'm pretty sure... Actually, maybe you can because they take two minutes to build. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't make sense in your head. You're like, you can't possibly afford that. They're so expensive. And then you're like, ah, oh, but you've only got to make three every two minutes. Well... Third base is going to be reestablished here by Randy. I don't think that's going to last long. This is cute. Dropping creep with the Overlord and spreading creep with the Queens to make sure that they can be a little more mobile here. Jameskins with the cute plays. Fourth base established for Jameskins now. He's up 74 to 45 in the worker count. And overall, things are just looking very happy for him. He's going to be able to kill off this third base once again, but the engagement going down once again. A lot of these Void Rays are falling. And, well, the carriers are low on hit points, but they do survive. Third base is cancelled. There's a fourth up for James Jamesikins. Yep. He's adding in more Hydras. He's not adding in more Queens, because he doesn't need to. The Voidway count is zero. So the Queens actually aren't that good against carriers? No, not really. I like Honest the way you're just agreeing I with what I say. It's fantastic. Honestly, like, Hydras aren't that great against carriers either, but... James Jamesikins is at the position where he can just, like, beat his head against the wall until the wall breaks. Aspire in production would be quite good, though, because... I love it! Proxy Spore Crawlers! I love it! <laughs> things you never thought you would see. <laughs> There's many things I expect to see Proxy, but Spore Crawlers is not one of them. In go the Hydras, in go the Carriers. Great move actually bringing the Lings underneath. It helps soak up some of the Interceptor fire if they're not targeted. And that is actually going to be it! GG! Jameskins ties it up!